Okay, let's talk about these three lines. Uh, let's try them. In our little macro here. They're still within whoops. They're still within let me get them from here. They're still in here in the sorry, they're still in the width at width and width section. Uh here. These three. By the way, there is some way to put in uh I don't know. Some way to have line numbers in here, I think. Maybe not. Maybe not here. Anyway, uh, sometimes it's nice to have line numbers. Okay, and uh, we go to... Let's just, just put that in our little test one. Just to see what happens. So again, as I said, it's, it's still in the width clause. So for example, when we see a dot rows, it's really referring to this dot rows. Okay, so um, can we guess what it's doing? Not so easily. Um, so it's taking rows. Remember, rows means all of the rows because it has an S, so it's a collection of all of the rows. But then we put in a specific row. Remember, next row has a meaning. I gave it the meaning 5 in our little test macro or test subroutine, but uh, we do not that's not the way it really is in the actual code. But anyway, so here it would be 5 plus 1, so that would be 6, so it would be the 6 row. So this would say select the 6 row. And then this one uh, means, it's not so, so obvious, but what it means is um, just to insert a new row. So it's just like doing something like this. So if you go to uh, insert, can you see this or not? Maybe you can't see that. Let me move that. So it's just like going to insert. Uh, no, it doesn't. That's so easy here. Let's try just to right click and I'll right click and insert here, uh, insert a new row and shift the cells down or whatever. So um, let's just see what happens. Suppose I, just, to, just so we can see it, I'll just color this like that. Okay, we can see it. Now what happens if I do that? Insert and shift cells down. Inter insert, no, sorry. This is the one that it's similar to this. Insert a new row. So click that. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this all got pushed down because a new row was inserted here. Okay, so that's basically what this is doing also. It's inserting and shifting it down. You could, I guess you could shift uh, some other way, but this is shifting it down. And then, okay, so we did that. And then what? Uh, then we, uh, to again, with sheet 2, we cells next row 5, comma 1, select it. So select uh, cell 5, 1. Okay, so let's try it. But let's make sure we can, under we can see it. So, okay. So let's, I don't know, do we have to click somewhere special? Maybe not. So let's just click somewhere. Let's call it here. So we click here and see what happens now. So um, this yellow line is currently on row 9. I'll even put a 9 there just so that we know. Okay, so this yellow line is currently row 9. Let's see what happens. When we run this macro now, we don't really need, let's see, we, we actually wouldn't have that there, so I'll take that out too. Let's see if this works or not. Or did I make a mistake? Uh, so let's run it here. 
Okay, it didn't didn't cause any problems. And then this got filled in like we expected, and this is no longer row nine. And we're selecting over here five one. Right, this is now row ten, so this got shifted down. Um and five one is what we should have selected. Okay, so that's what that does. Now why does he do that? He says he says these statements insert a blank row following the next row. Right? Next row was five. So it inserts an, a blank row after that. Because it's we're mm, I guess so. Because we're selecting next row plus one and then yeah. I'm not quite sure where it inserts it, but anyway, it seems to work. Um, the reason that uh, the reason he's doing this, he says, is that there's a table of analyses discussed later in the chapter that are found a few rows below the rankings. So, he, in other words, what he's saying is he's got some other table down here somewhere, and uh, as he's adding new rows. Remember the object here is to add new rows and put in the time and the data. As he's doing that, um, we're not adding new rows, I'm sorry, as he's uh, writing to new rows. So first he writes the time and, and his data in this row, and then he writes the time in here and then his data in this row, and then he writes the next time and his data in this row. As he's doing that, he would prefer, so there's some table down here, he would prefer to keep pushing it down. Otherwise, eventually he's going to run into that table and overwrite that table, which he doesn't want to do. So he's just m being careful, and put every time he writes a new row of data here, he pushes that table down one row. Okay, that's the idea. And then it's end with. So there's nothing after that in the with statement. So let's make sure. So he, <coughs> not quite, he has to do this. So we didn't talk about that yet. Let's see, do we miss that? Mm, well, here it is anyway. Uh, terminate the with block that deems any object beginning with a dot, such as cells, to belong this. So anyway, he's just explaining about that. but. He has, what is that? He has this in the um, with statement, but I guess it could be out of the with statement because it's not really related to this at all. So he has it in here, he has it in, but in his explanation he has it out here. And I guess it doesn't really matter where you do that. He puts it, he has it in his explanation like that. But let's undo that and undo that. No. Sorry. There. Okay. So we'll leave it like that. But um, so what does this do? Application. That's just uh, like um, when you're giving the address of certain kinds of functions um, or you, you can't just write the function by itself. You have to sort of say uh, where it's... It's kind of like uh, telling the computer where this function is located. Like, actually, all of these functions are, are little pieces of code, and they're somewhere on your computer. Each one has to be somewhere on your computer. I mean, it's not, they don't just, they're not just magic. They're pieces of code, and they have to exist somewhere in some location, some folder in your computer. And this application says, tells, tells, uh, tells uh, the um, compiler, or no, tells the, um, the system, the runtime system, tells your, the, what the, tells the part of your computer that's running this program where to find this, I guess it's the compiler actually, but where to find this. Okay, so uh, 
it's in basically some folder maybe called application. Okay, that's kind of the idea of this. So application.calculation equals and x calculate automatic. So uh, we I think we turned off calculation be automatic calculation somewhere before and now we're going to turn it back on. So I think we said we we didn't want it to uh, do certain kinds of calculations. I forget the situation, but we did say that. So now um, at the end we turn it turn it back on. So look at this. This is a little explanation of what is auto calculate in Excel allows Excel to automatically calculate formulas in real time. So when a referenced cell changes, the formula automatically calculates. So let's see. Let's go back to what we had. Is it true? I don't think. Maybe auto-calculate is not on yet on here, because if I change this to 8 and hit Enter, oh yeah, it is. So these changed, right? So I guess auto calculate is on, and you can apparently turn it off. Now, when I was looking for the meaning of auto cal uh, calculate, um, I found this. This is kind of interesting. Here is a typical spreadsheet of numbers. First, select a range of cells using click and drag. Auto-calculate has already totaled the selected numbers. No formula is necessary. Other options are available. Right-click on the total. Select Average. Now Auto-calculate displays the average of the selected numbers. Right-click again and switch back to Sum. You can also use auto-calculate on non-contiguous cells. Select cell B2 and control click on cell B4. Also control click on cell B5. Auto-calculate totals only the three selected cells. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, let's just finish this up. So we just did the auto calculate, set it back, turned it back on. Uh, then this saves the workbook. Okay, so you save everything that you've done so you don't lose it. And then application screen updating equals true. So this is a, a function. Uh, remember, we turned it off. We didn't want to see all the calculations <coughs> happening. We didn't, uh, if we were using some other, uh, something else on our computer, and uh, this started to run automatically, we don't want to get, uh, we don't want to shift over to that, uh, to our, to the Excel application, and uh, we don't want to get uh, confused with it. So we turned it off, but now we turn it back on, and uh, do it again run the three statements, uh, do it again subroutine discussed earlier that causes the new data subroutine to run again an hour from now. Okay, we'll see about that in the next video. So let's stop here.